Hello there everyone and welcome to the start of a new campaign in Equestriate War which we're playing as a nation of Odenstadt Helquith. Bogataba Zum Sigaretim. The reformist didn't have stored out since their formation as an odd faction within the Order of Helquil. One of their particularity, or par particularity has been to ally themselves with outside groups far from the discipline of the Order. One such group has been the rapidly fanatic and paramilitary group of the Sturmgreif led by Alda von Wingenberg, Wingenberg, who enjoys patrolling and harassing Pony's citizens. Free from the rules of the conduct of the Knights, they have sought many ways to gather funds for the activities. This week, members of the Sturmgreif have launched a new com company producing cigarettes. They claim that their cigarettes will be the finest tobacco on all of Hellquill and that their revenues will entirely go funding the greatest endeavor in Hellquill's history. Rumors on the street is that their members have already begun to harass store owners to make room for the new product and limit foreign or competitor tobacco. At least we'll get some cigarettes out of it. The treasure of Diamond Mountain. Over 30 years ago, our noble knights invaded the savage dogs of Diamond Mountain and plundered each and every underground vault they had. Unintelligent beasts, they only hoarded wealth for the sake of wealth, and have used this boon in an efficient manner in the past decades, slowly improving our living standards, armed forces, and more. Yet even this vast treasure has its end, and we are left with only a fraction of the original sum. With the dogs having cowardly joined the forces of the River Coalition, there is no hope of getting our claws on such a treasure anytime soon, and we will have to make do with it. The inner circle of the ores is in agreement over the need to use it for investment and not to hoard it ourselves, but not over what it should be spent on. Our civilian advisors are strongly recommending to invest in our weak industrial sector, while knights are divided between attracting settlers and investing in our armed forces. Siegfried Trappenfeld will have the final decision on the matter. Help kickstart our industry. Uh, at least for people and attract settlers. And then better army bonuses. We're both bound to use this treasure on matters of war. Oh, I'll do that one. Why not? Also, right now, we can't really do anything here. We have no focus being going on the Particle Father. News has arrived in the last month about the great tour of his Imperial Majesty Grover V by train to inaugurate the Imperial Railway System. Though his news, a great display of Grifonian engineering capabilities, had a much more bitter taste than Hellquill, which was not be, which was not to be visited by the Emperor for years. Hellquill's petition for being integrated within the plans of the Imperial Railway System, but the Imperial planners had failed to include Hellquill in the initial plans. Of course, they hid themselves behind arguments about lack of security for workers in Hellquill or even a lack of participation from the Knights into the project. But the reason was clear. Despite relations between Hellquill and the Empire warming up to under Grover the Fifth's rule, the Imperial Court remained angry about Trappenfeld's decision to not renew the oaths of direct loyalty to the Crown. The Imperial Railway System was just a convenient way to punish the frontier for. This enraged Hellquillian traders and knights who saw that even the destitute Barony of Angrifer and a Principality of Catherine have been included in the railway's plans despite rampant banditry. To add insult to injury, construction has started for impressive railway stations both Hellquill and, Sol Hellquill and Soldau, and while Soldau has eventually gained some minor connections to the Empire, Hellquill's remains unconnected and unfinished. Have you been forgotten out here? Perhaps we have the, the spirits, the Knights of Hellquill, which looks really, really cool. The Bund der Freien Hunde, with the Reformisten, as well as Pony Minorities. <clears throat> Today, a new group of diamond dogs has been liberated from Diamond Mount thanks to the Bund der Freien Hunde, as now being processed to leave for Bronze Hill. These operatives and volunteers to organize a scavenger and claim as they arrive in Ortselberg. Ortselberg. The Freie Hunde Bund is a non profit organization ran mostly from Bronze Hill, but operating in Hellquell since the reign of Grover II, who welcomed the refugee dogs. Their entire goal is to help, the, uh, help slaves from Diamond Mountain escape and brought and, and should they want it to Bronze Hill. The Boone has long had a difficult relationship with the Order of Hellquill, where discrimination towards non griffins is a frequent issue despite several dogs serving. As a result, the Boone hasn't ever really developed a working relationship with the Order, instead operating on its own thanks to funds provided by the elite and small donors. A difficult relationship has become a point of contention for many in the Order, mostly from the radical Remorfistin reformistin ideologues, but also from the lost political knights such as Wilhelm uh, Stackelberg or Elrak Ab. Sarah. Despite this, the current Grandmaster Siegfried Rappenfeld has so far shielded them from any harm in their voice like that of Knight Archiv Archivist August von Orzelberg calling for destroying the Bund's role in Hellquill. Let sleeping dogs lie for the time being. The slaves escape. Very nice. Minorities. Oh, minorities. And Ritterlichter Rat. Siegfried's retirement. The Grandmaster Siegfried Treffenfeld has served the Order of Hellquell well for many years, standing valiantly against the threat in the East. Sadly for us all, as well to uh, lead us, has slowly faded over these past couple of trying years. Much has changed in Grifonia, with new ideas and new threats emerging, and Treffenfeld has lamented that his old age has made him ill-fit to face them. The inner circles thanked him for his service, and all the former Grandmaster will retire in his farm on the banks of the Griff King River now. The inner circle is to meet and debate among themselves as to what the Order is to become in this new millennia. This election, as occurring in an intense situation, is bound to be a crossroads for us. The emergence of the Remorfistin, 
reformist movement has indeed caused much disturbance in Helquil. Unhappy with the current situation, these ideologues held or led by the knight Wingfried von Katharenberg are calling for extreme solutions to the pony threat in the east. While Wingfried and his supporters have taken their distances from it, we've had a taste of their supporters have taken uh, had the policy and said along sword. Yet, the Catherinian has gained a significant following and he may very well win out. His staunchest critic is Erlach Apsadrat, a Rumerian knight who claims that the mission given to their order by his Imperial Majesty Grover II is unamendable and is sacred to speeches and made him so far the de facto leader of the traditionalists. Arguments between the two have quickly become heated and as the inner circles about to meet, it's clear that there will be no chance of compromise between the two, but in the background, another voice has emerged out of the knight activist August von Orzelberg. A common er erudite griffin, August, is quietly calling for introspection and reforms as well as welcoming the population and the government. It's also advanced ideas of reconciliation with the ponies, much to the dismay of the reformiston. We thank you for your service. Oh, can you do anything here yet? Hey! So now we can choose Springtime and Helkwell, the last two night, or New Helkwell, which, honestly, with me, with me, I, I definitely want to try a New Helkwell, so I apologize we're not going down the route you want, we, you want us to go, but it looks really cool. Nurture the boon, but I want to see what this one is. The new Hellquell. The council decided then ever to elevate Hellquell to greatness. Wingfried von Katharinburg shall take over. He and his reformist movement shall reform our society into something greater, something that shall last for a thousand years. Huh. I wonder what that sounds like. Ooh, reformistin. Fistin. Why keep going on fistin? Reformistin. With a reformistin in the government. We want a lot more political power, so. Ooh, monthly population. That's not bad. The Newland Act. Bringing settlers. The reformistin. In the council. With his newly gained power, Wingfree has arranged many high ranking members of his movement to be put in the council. They are unlikely to oppose his policies now, leaving him free to do whatever he has in mind for our nation. Back in Helquil, news has emerged that Ernst Fischer has come back from the Exxon and rejoined his comrades within the underground KPH. Ernst Fischer, previously served within the Wehrmacht, where he proved himself to be an audacious and charismatic leader as well as a skillful soldier. However, he became dissatisfied with the order's policies and goals, considering them outdated and futile. He finally deserted and subsequently left the country. Not much is known about his time as an exile, but his name frequently came up during interrogations of communist agitators and seized subversive documents. At some point, the young Griff gained power over the fledgling Helquillian communist party of the KPH and led it from afar. His ideology, beyond the usual communist drill, was apparently based on the idea that soldiers rather than workers or peasants will form a revolutionary guard and impose communism, but finally destroying the so-called reactionary movements. We need to keep an eye out on them. Rebellious scum. You know what? Uh, no, uh, bequeathing. Let's do about that first. <clears throat> Abel von Klondek, a landed noble in the Duchy of Strawberry, died airless last week in his will his bequeath his estate to the Order of Helquil. This practice has been an ancient one and has been considered a mark of prestige among the Griffonian nobility. Traditionally, the order organizes them into trust and rents into locals. Since the revolution in 978 and the imperial collapse, much of these estates have been received by local authorities, illegally sold or destroyed, causing many headaches for the order. Since then, the number of bequeathings has dwindled and with it a source of revenue for the order. The Von Klaudek bequeathing is actually the first one of the 11th century. A grand ceremony has been planned in Von Klaudek's name in the Temple of Boreas in Helquil. Of oh, good omen. Bless his soul. Bless, 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 that's all. Uh, trying to build more civvies. Uh, do you have a fear for a field marshal? Feld marshal. Not sure, but we do have Olag von Ap Sayrad. I'm sorry I'm saying that wrong, but whatever. Emperor's dead. Being free takes control. The inner circle has. Discuss the future of Helco in depth, and one singular griffin has come out on top of everyone else, it seems. Wingfried von Katharinburg, founder and leader of the controversial reformistin movement, has been elected to lead Helco henceforth. The new Grandmaster, not known for his being subtle, laid out his ambitions in front of the council. He vowed to act in the interests of Helco and his griffins alone, deliberately ignoring and leaving out the Helco still home to many pony minorities. Wingfried and his violent ideology are renowned for their views on griffin supremacy and the concept that ponies are an e that aren't evil, that must be eliminated for the good of griffin kind. His speech marked a drastic shift from his predecessors. Wingfried made no reference to the mission given to them by the Emperor Grover II, the place of the free diamond dogs within the order, even their duties towards the Empire. He also failed to address the controversial bloodbath carried on by his ideological brethren's longsword, instead focusing on the pur purity of his mission, and the prestige even outside of Helquil. One way or another, Wingfried aims to alleviate or elevate Helquil to something beyond an ordinary order of knights, and shape it into something greater, something that will last for a thousand years, for glory. Look at this guy. Nice hat. Nice hat. More organization, that's pretty good. Ooh, it's not bad too. A reign of terror. Uh, an invitation from Catherine. Soon after assuming power, Grandmaster Wingfried sent a messenger to Catherine to inform his cousin Delzia von Catherineburg that he was now a mighty Grandmaster, but when the envoy returned, he delivered a message that wasn't a congratulations like Wingfried had expected, but an invitation. Princess Delzia was inviting him to her wedding with Glitterhoof, who would become the Prince of Catherine. At first, Wingfried didn't recognize the name before remembering it was a unicorn skull Wingfried had gifted to Delzia several years ago. He knew that his cousin had grown oddly fond of the trophy, but now she tried to marry it? Truly, she had gone completely insane like he had feared. The messenger asked if he would accept the invitation. While Wingfried felt sympathy for his cousin, he also found 
find it despicable that she would love the remains of a filthy pony so much she hoped her cousin wouldn't be getting too upset, he said, if he said no. Politely refused the invitation. Mm -hmm. Gradually moved last mass illiteracy, paved the way. Brave new frontier. Out wait, industrializing society with outdated industrial sector. Longsword must submit. Erlock. New generation of officers. Formalize the Sturmgreifer. Ooh, more population. Um, Longsword. I would love to go to what were Longsword. Reformiston, huh? Wait, there actually are Reformiston? Reformiston? Huh. Longsword Bloodbath. Oh, a, geni a genocide here. Oh. <clears throat> well. Alright, a bullet for the traitors. Some griffins seem to actually believe that ponies and griffins are equals. Very well, we should give them an equal treatment to the ponies, namely a firing squad. Maybe we should be training divisions too. That probably would be smart to do. Night chapter, griffins, mountaineers, we'll go to these guys. Anyone want a promotion? Imbecile. Wow, that sucks. They're just stupid. Well then. New Maryland recognizes Stallion grad. I'll go with them because they have artillery. And I do love me some artillery. Uh, damage garrisons. That's not bad. We will definitely need less damage garrisons, so we'll go with that guy for now. Nice. A bullet for traitors. How much do we get every day now? 1.21 is not bad. Deal with the old guard. Well, some members of the old guard have jumped out onto our movement's policies, many believe that we are simply too radical. Their opposition is a hurdle for us in Hellcult overall, we must get rid of these troublemakers as soon as possible. The old guard complains. While the ref... Oh, hello. Oh, well, look at that. Reformist and parties have gained a lot more than its fair share of supporters within the order. Not all Nats have been convinced by our ideology. As their supporters began to take the rightful place within the administration, many traditionals and moderate members of the order started to voice their complaints about Wingfried's leadership. Among the grievances are the intrusion of civilian political operatives within the knightly government, the lack of respect for tradition, and the alleged moral lapses of many members, and the chaos caused by the Reformist and agenda in Longsword. Wingfried von Katherinburg openly condemned those who had sabotaged his immense task of bringing the order into new age and mused about the complainers being guilty of treason towards their order, caused only further complaints and controversy. If nothing is done, the old guard may prove to be prompt for a rule. We don't appreciate dissenters. The booting heart judge. Despite the frontier status of Hellquill, the order has had for a long time a tradition of a relatively fair and serious justice system, far more than their poor neighborhood of Longsword. The traditionally literate knights have been committed to crafting well-designed law codes and procedures, even if jurists from Yale were dismayed at some of the ar archisms, archaisms remaining in it like the du legal dual system. The ref reformists had numerous issues with that system. They saw it as being infested with civilians who had little regard or understanding for the necessities of the military order and considered some of the rules and procedures as nothing more than tying the cl knights' claws behind their back. After his arrival in power, Wingfried von Katharenberg oversaw a vast rework of the judicial system, nominating reformists and Reformiston, allowing candidates and the judiciary and removing several procedural protections for ponies, diamond dogs, and ideological agitators. A judge named Lothar Wittenacht, or Wittenacht, openly defied the reforms in the hierarchy by ordering the liberation of a journalist who had published articles critical of the election of von Katzenberg. However, the journalist has already been executed, and there was much confusion about whether he had been executed despite the court's order or due to a mistake. As a reaction, the judge formally resigned and left the letter in his home, stating his opinion that the order is no longer legitimate and his decision to join the KPH. The head activist or archivist of the order, August von Ortelsberg, while disagreeing with the decision to join criminal organizations like the Communists, criticized the reforms of the justice system as being rushed and called for some restraints. The Grand Master declared any criticism of the necessary judicial reforms as being counterproductive and dangerously biased. Good riddance. We need a lot more weapons. I haven't looked at the screen yet either. Whoops. in the Empire. Oh. Some cigarette and blow. The SC cigarettes, the product brand produced by allies of the Stumgreif, have failed to make a hit in the market. Hell, Quilliam's smokers have found the brand to be unappealing and of low quality. Rumors and jokes about the SG members smoking other brands in secret or store, or store owners deliberately helping partisans to seal or destroy shipments of this brand just so they can s justify selling others. Despite all this, there remained a mainstay in tobacco and stores thanks to political pressure and bullying from the members of Stumgreif. Perhaps we'll get some to stop smoking. Um, I guess we have to wait to do this one, huh? Huh? Actually, just do the old guard, yeah. Dispose of Erlock. <clears throat> Erlock and his clique are our main opposition to rev revolutionizing Hellquill. They cling to the precious traditions and the duty of protecting the Empire, but they do not see the larger picture that is a pony threat. We'll find a suitable method of eliminating them. 
I'm gonna go with this one probably. Uh, the Almanac Controversy. A strange controversy has erupted within the Order's leadership this week. The release of the new book, Printed Out, has been halted. The book, called The Almanac of the Heroes of the Order of Helquil, lists most of our military and political leaders with pictures, birthday dates, and a brief biography of their lives. The goal of the book was to popularize the transform order and make our leadership more popular among the general population. The author even argued that patriotic griffins could use the Almanac to send birthday presents to their heroes, strengthening the bond between the Order and the country. One detail caused the ire of Elder von Wingenbergen, though. His biography mentioned an antidote about his past friendship with the Foles and Phillies when he was a chick. Uh, Edler exploded the idea and called the book's allegation some of the most vile slander he'd ever heard. Refusing to calm down, he called for the removal of the book and implied that the author may be a political agitator. At that point, Dimitrius Kampfos identified Edler due to the author being an old friend whose loyalty to the state was beyond question. The fight went on with speculations and rumors spreading about both Griffins and the mess hall of the castle. In the end, the matter was brought in front of the Wingfried von Katzenberg. He ordered them to cease their bickering and allowed the release of the book with censorship of the antidote. All over a darn book. August retirement. August von Otto's Berg has been called to the office of Grand Master. He has been surprised. Wingfried had never shown much interest in the day-to-day -day life of the archives or even the need of historical records. When he entered, Wingfried smiled at him and stood, him up, stood up to him to come embrace him. My friend, I'm pleased to meet you. I hope you've had a good day. August was taken aback by the sudden familiarity of the Grand Master, and it took him a moment to try and answer in kind, but was interrupted nonetheless. I've been so touched by your decision to retire. You've been serving us for so long and so well. It is for a great loss for an order to lose a grip such as yourself, almost like one loses a memory. August froze and stared, wide-eyed. But my Grandmaster, I'm afraid you've been ill-informed. I'm not retiring. Are you saying I've, I've made a mistake, August? It pains me, but no matter. Old age makes any grip forget things. Perhaps this may refresh your memory. The Grandmaster went to his desk. I picked up a letter. He showed it to him, and there was a letter, a letter of resignation signed by him. Forged, of course, but that was that. He understood the implication and meekly thanked the Grand Masters. Vinkfried explained to him that he would have been given a guard assigned to his residence so that what happened to her dear brother Erlock never happens again. Later that evening, August was desperately looking in his law books to find some kind of imperial resource. He suddenly heard Paul steps from the corridor and jumped from his seat. He started to hide, but as the door of the archives were opening, his wing caused a book to fall. Panicking, he let out a small weapon and froze in the direction of the door. It was Karl von Soldau. The soldier approached, not menacingly, but with an expression of concern on his face. He extended his claw to give him a sealed letter. He'd go to the Temple of Air on S in Solde. This prelate is a friend of mine and will protect you as best he can. It's all I can do. Please go and don't make a fuss for your own sake. August took the letter inside. Thank you, Karl. He'll go, quiet or not. Rosewood order, huh? Our duty for honor, huh? The Olged, Olged, Ogled Society. The Stumgraf have been have since their inception been a curious bunch, even among the reformisten. The members often misfits and fringe ideologues. Ideologues cultivated many stranger ideas that, while influencing those of prominent figures like Vinfrich von Katzenberg, remain on the fringe. Adler von Wingenbergen. Of Ingen Bag. Leader the Sturmgraf is no stranger to these eccentricities. To those who know him, it was no surprise that when he integrated the inner circle of the Order of Hellquill, he thought to s sought to spread his ideas and invite several members to meetings of one of his societies, the Ogled Society. The Ogled Society's believes that the Griffins were not always residents of this world, but instead used to live in a utopic plane of existence named Ogled. Griffins lived among the gods and had magic abilities far greater than any of those known in this world, but ponies and especially unicorns and alicorns infiltrated this world, taking advantage of the Griffins' generosity and in time expelled them from it. Some theories posit that Celestia and Luna, the two princesses of Equestria, personally participated in that crime, robbed of their world. Their magic and even the memories of that perfect time, Griffins were forced down to the world where once again they are oppressed and robbed by lesser creatures. Members of the Ogled Society believe that only through the complete and utter destruction of ponies worldwide will they be able to ascend back to the world of Ogled to reclaim their birthright. The Ogled Society remains a great, a marginal group within the Sturmgraf and reformist in, uh, movement at large. However, since the idea of ascending back to Ogled isn't really antithetic to Wingfried von Katzenberg's desire for greater living space for the Griffins, most leave Adler and its esoteric followers be. Quite something. Borrow. Trade. Uh, military trade wouldn't be bad. I want to see if we can do something else here first. I want to get to like partial mobilization or something. Civil War in Alenia. Cool. New generation of officers? Why not? Uh, let's get this one first so we can get mobilized the population. The Vemox is the leader of Hellquill, but we cannot be certain of their absolute commitment to their goals. Instead, we'll officialize the Sturmgraf, a pair military organization, uh, to serve as an official extension to our army as a whole. The, the devotion will make them our best warriors. 
the birth of credit or game. Apart from Geheimdienst, have painted a, a most worrying picture. In addition to subversive activities from ponies, the KPH and the Grumbling Old Guard, we've uncovered proof of the birth of a new criminal organization. The group is composed of members of the Order of Hellquill, or the Wehrmacht who have been forced out and have deserted. They call themselves a creditor, considering that Hellquill is indebted to them and that they, as creditors, will take what is theirs by force. Our security forces have already attributed several assassinations, sabotage, attacks, and thefts uh, to them. Wow. With military grade equipment and their experience, they'll most likely be a menace. Traitors. Or support. Yeah, operative slot would be really good to get eventually, too. Um, is anyone here really, really good on army XP? I like the attack and defense. Ooh, morale, point one two. Oh, but you off. Let a mouse. Oh. Armor. Land doctrine. Anything unique here? That's kind of unique. Synthetic stuff. Um, we need to be at war. It will be at war relatively soon-ish. It might be best to wait for that one. So instead... Ooh, I don't know. Special forces? These are all okay. We don't even have any armor yet, so it doesn't make any sense to get that one yet, either. You know what? Let's go with offense. Screw it. We'll go offense. Start working on that a little bit more. Nice. It's only 10 divisions, but... Still. These guys are only 12 coming with. But they do have some support there, too. Hmm... Let's save our stuff for now. A mysterious disappearance. The nomination of Winfried von Katherinburg uh, <clears throat> at the head of the Order of Hellquell has been a contentious affair. The chief among his opponents had been Urlach Ap Sadra, the Rumerian knight. Deeply traditionalist, he proved himself to be also a sore loser and openly complained about the decision of the inner circle. Many sense that a confrontation would soon erupt between him and the new Grand Master until a fateful day. On uh, at 1 o'clock, 14th of September, 1007, Urlach left his quarters for his monthly trip to the inn of the banks of the Griff King River. The knight enjoyed a fish and relax there during uh, during uh, his, his time off. However, he never came back from the trip. The owner and staff of the inn were questioned and confirmed that he did indeed come, but that they never saw him leave and his car was still there. Upon inspection of the air, no traces of him were found or any sign of a struggle. The knight had simply vanished. An investigation was opened to the matter, but the current lead is that partisans of criminal griff snaps, griff naps, criminals griffnapped him. How mysterious. Oh no. Unforeseen consequences. For several weeks now, the attacks carried on by the communist underground has been increasing. Uh, with several members of our leadership being specifically targeted, despite many of them not being public figures. Some have speculated that the KPH should obtain mold within the ranks, but the capture of Pony Parsons' safe house today shed some light on what had happened. A copy of the Almanac of the Heroes of the Order of Hell Corps had been found with scribble notes. The partisans had taken the book that was supposed to honor our soldiers and civilian servants, or civil servants, and used it as a hit list. The matter was not helped by their biographies containing special details that may have been used in assassination attempts. The book was quickly removed from the bookstores, but the damage was already done. Burn all remaining copies. Oh boy. A new generation of officers. Our new movement has inspired many veterans and upstarts alike to take up arms with the need as capable leaders who are trained in new order, free from the trappings of outdated tradition, certainly. We can count on the most fervent followers to follow a capable commanding claw. The arcanes of the stone of mind, Wingfried von Katerenberg, Dimitrius Kampfaus, Karl von Soldau, Wilhelm Stackelberg, and a few others made their way down the dark staircase until they finally emerged in a room, a large room, decorated with a strange decoration. It was a mixture of old Rumerian ruins, uh, old believer iconography, and oddly enough, decoration that Demetrius remembered to have seen in a book about the Riverlands. At the center of it was Edler von Wingenberg, dressed in peculiar red and white robes. He welcomed them with an air of solemnity and invited them to sit on the floor. Demetrius and Karl exchanged concern about, concerned looks while Wilhelm glared at the Riverlander imagery. Welcome, my friends. Welcome to this place of rest and reflection, treated as a home of your mind, for your minds and a place of healing for your bodies. This chamber has been built using only the purest uh, tekite tek tight stones. As such, we are isolated from the evils of magic and may recollect in the glory of the griffin mine, burgeoned as it was in the lost towns of Ogled. Sister Hild the God, please begin your songs for our guests. Visibly happy, Edler seated the center of the room to a female griffin and went to sit next to Grandmaster Wingfried. The griff began to chant in a strangely repetitive fashion to which Edler nodded in rhythm, followed after a moment by Wingfried. Demetrius sighed deeply and turned to Carl, who he noticed was sipping discreetly from a flask. He stopped when he saw that Demetrius had noticed. The veteran grabbed the flask and took a sip himself. He tried to pass it to Wilhelm, but the knight didn't pay any attention. He was staring at the chantress in its expression that Demetrius could have best describe as somewhere between agony and eating a rotten lemon. He took a deep breath and drank another sip before handing the flask back to Carl. That's gonna be a long evening. That was, uh, <clears throat> something, something. Actually, we could probably do it again. Let's go with this one, just so we get some more stability, too. Because we could really use more stability. 
conspiracy theories. Wilhelm von Stackelberg was enjoying a night out of the Golden der Flugelbeerhall, a favorite meeting place of the Order's knights and officers. The atmosphere was good, but the table was slightly agitated by that Friedrich, an old friend of his. The Paul Griff had drunk more than was reasonable and began to ramble. Wil Wilhelm had already sent for a soldier to bring him back to his quarters when Friedrich suddenly slammed the table, causing several beer glasses to tip over. You are also bloody naive, like chicks out of the cribs. Why can't you see it? Wilhelm didn't respond. He hated drunks in the antics, even from a friend of his, a friend. Uh, Friedrich approached him to calm down. Don't touch me. They didn't. They killed Orlok. They killed him because he was an inconvenience. It goes all the way to the t from the top. From von Katharnberg, from him. Friedrich raised himself, pointed to Edler uh, von Wingenberg, Wingenberg, sitting at a near table. The officer noticed and glared in his direction. Wilhelm once again tried to calm Friedrich down, but no avail. He kept ranting, grabbed a bottle by which he tried to empty, and began to slur his words. Soon the military police approached him and took him away as they went for any drunk. He didn't try to stop, but... Stop it, but Wilhelm sensed that there would be more. The next day, the news arrived that the knight had been demoted and arrested for sedition and slander against the Grand Master. We cannot allow such grand slander of our Grand Master. Uh, so, was it? Long Longsword must submit. Oh, the Civil War is to end first. God dang it. Are you kidding me? Longsword has been long been an ally to us, though they failed to make a more aggressive stance towards the East, like us. As about time, we observed the mental health cooling nation so that we, we can fight our enemy together. A uh, burn farms. Uh, Karl von Sodal tightened his coat. Mornings in the Helkulian forest could be quite cold and misty, and this one was no exception. He took a swig from his canteens and looked upon the distant hill. The compound was large and lively, with ponies beginning to go about their day. Definitely a more of a community than a farm, and quite realistically able to support our partisan self from the looks of it. They failed to notice that they were surrounded by knights and uh, Sturmgreif, or simply had no sentries. Karl took another swig, thinking. This would have to confirm until Helkul. It looked all very quiet for a partisan base. Carl was about to leave for the radio truck when he suddenly heard gunfire. He quickly grabbed his binoculars and looked down. Or looked on. He saw some shots being fired coming from within the forest and panic spreading in the compound. What could be the meaning of this? He yelled up to his officers asking for reports. Every Griff seemed as dumbfounded as he was. After a few seconds, Alfred Aschenkampf, one of the few new Sturmgriff officers, walked up from von Soldau and quietly asked, Sir, I require artillery support. Carl von Soldau blew up. Artillery support? What support? By the gods, what is going on over there? We are waiting for confirmation. I haven't ordered an attack. What? Under whose orders? I haven't authorized any offensive. Mine, under instructions from Helco, I'm not under your orders. As you recall, we Sturmgreif operate independently. Now I have ruled that this compound is a terrorist base. That needs to be purged. Now I have a request artillery support from unit. You're not getting it. Fine, I'll report this back home. And he turned back. Beyond angry, Carl threw his canteen in Alfred's direction, general direction and angrily snapped back that he would report this, but to no avail. He looked back at the hill. The compound was already catching fire. It was done. This is how we, how we do things now. Oh, do we really have to wait to get to war economy, man? Of course, then again, we won't have more than 50% worth, but yeah, I must just go to partial mobilization then. You can even more attack too, which I like. Lots and lots of attack. More infantry. There's just more guns. How's this war going? How are these two sides doing? Starry Knight sounds very familiar. Besides of actual painting and stuff like that. Want to push? Blue Moon Festival. If you want to know about that, please go ahead. I've toast to family unity. Well, since we have to wait now, that sucks. Organize these guys. What else do we have for like economy and stuff? Ooh, newest Geschäft. Oh, that's not bad. National Wirtschafts Abteilung. That's not bad. Uh, it's not bad either. What's this one? The first rule of any economy is that we do not have all that we require. And why is that? How cool is enemies are hoarding and stockpiling the resources, intending to halt our industrial progress. The state will have to intervene and control the industry, production of resources, and flow of goods. It's the only way to survive, of course. The Octorian priest. The temple of Octorius in the center of Helcol is resonating with the sound of prayers. Griffins. <clears throat> From all corners of the city, as well as knights, were attendants for the ceremony that Entschlossen Heitnacht. They would play, pray for a whole night before attending a community breakfast. While the warriors among them would spar with traditional swords and lances, or so they were supposed to. During this early evening, the doors of the temple were slammed open by armed soldiers who loudly entered without a care for the faithfuls. They were led by the recognizably large and scarred Demetrius Kampfaus, who marched towards the altar of the temple with a document in his claw. One Gref uh, left the prayer banks to stand in his way, Wilhelm von Stackelberg, knight of the inner circle, invisibly offended by the intrusion. What is this? What is the meaning of this, Kampfhaus? This is a house of prayer. Kampfhaus stopped in front of his brother in arms, saluted, and showed him the document. Stackelberg took it and began to read as Kampfhaus began to explain himself. I have no desire to perturb the ceremony, but I have orders. I am to place a priest. Cool under arrest for subversive activities and sedition. Stackelberg raised his head towards Kampfhaus, stupefied. Kampfhaus tapped the sigil and signature on the document, order the Grand Master. Stackelberg acquiesced and in his face somber stepped aside, proceed. Traders in every corner. So, Reign of Terror, pacify this stuff. 
Where is this boss? Oh, that'd be actually that's really good to get. That really hurts the pocket assumption, but whatever. The bequeathing scandal. Today, a scandal erupted after it became known that several states around the Grafonia have been bequeathed to the Order of Hellquill, have been used as luxury vacation homes by members of the reformist and leadership under the guise of training missions. Gossip abound about copious amounts of alcohol being consumed in several locations being degraded by unruly parties. Members among them Alfred Aschenkampf indicated that we have sanctioned been sanctioned for the infractions, but the damage is done. Not only have we lost significant revenue in the case of corruption, but our procedure has been badly hurt. On the pro longer term, noble girls may think twice before entrusting with their properties. Don them. The new Lenef. Some parts of our country remain relatively unpopulated. As such, we must kickstart a grand campaign of resettlement and migration so as to populate even the most desolate of places. Various incentives shall attract new settlers, which will pay taxes so we may fund our goals. We probably actually want to do it the hell. Let's create mobile workers for uh, again. Uh, Arty, arty, arty. Anything here is super. That's a national spirit, depending which army doctrine you chose. Combined arms effort. Oh, that's not bad. That's really nice. The Osley Jonin. Osley Jonin. It's not terrible either. Ooh, I like this one a lot. Panther. Octung Panzer. That's cool. Vox Grenadiers. Very nice. Ooh, that's really good too. Not bad. Yeah, they still might win here. They can get down here. And oh, 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 oh. Pay the way. I do want to get rid of mass illiteracy. Our citizens, young and old alike, must be taught of the truths of life. They shall reach from basic mathematics and writing all the way to the natural rivalry between group reference of ponies and pave the way. Our nation must prepare, prepare, prepare to fight the enemy, As, and such our industry must grow more factories, weapons, and troops to slaughter this dangerous foe. The creditors strike. The terrible news has come from Soldal. The creditor gang has struck once again, this time they made a count. They have attacked the Algamon Vestial Bank and emptied his vault. The ease with which they have orchestrated this heist shows that they have had help from the inside. Despite our garrison showing up in armored vehicles, they have managed to escape and kill many of our guards. The local garrison commander has already handed his resignation in in the wake of the attack. Uh, the bank, an old institution in Hellquill, serves as the main financial institution for merchants trading between Hellquill, the principality of Catherine, and the Grafonian Empire, but is also one of the major financial pillars of our order. It is through that the order pays all its military procurements in the West. You rebel scum. Dumb cigarettes and fraud. The SZ cigarette brand has been back in the conversation in Hellquill lately. Several clerks in our administration began to complain about the opac opacity of the company's accounts and alleged tax evasion. It has become clear that many members of Stimgraf have been misusing the company's royalties for their own personal gain. Members of the SG have grumbled about the rumors and several fights have erupted, yet they seem to be remaining loyal to their leadership. Several members of the council's announced have called for regulations to put an end to the circus show, however. Adler von Wingenbergen has blocked all attempts at reforms by leveraging his formidable influence in the order. So far, the Grand Masters refused to challenge him on this, on this and has delegated the matter to others in the hierarchy. Could they at least be more discreet? Bankruptcy of Luxenwing. To the shock of many in Hellquill, the Luxenwing Bank has been forced into bankruptcy today. With its demise, a whole chapter of Hellquill in history is ending. Founded in 904, the Luxenwing Bank was a conglomerate formed by several charities and small civilian early orders under the patronage of Western Griffonian nobles sympathetic to the old cause, given to Hellquill by the late Emperor Grover II. The goal was to negotiate, fund, and organize the pavement of ransoms for knights captured by Eastern enemies. The bank also funded and ran several charities dedicated to veterans' health and elderly care. Over time, the Luxenwing Bank had become a major intermediary between grip and interest in the Riverland powers, as well as a major source of pride from both Hellquill and Longsword. The collapse of the Griffonian Empire and the revolution was a major blow to the bank. Many of their patrons were either killed or ruined in the chaos, and the bank saw a dip in their donations and revenues. Faced with an increasingly tight budget and more and more reliance on their own shrinking profits, the bank had to cut a lot of charitable activities. In recent years, many of its members drifted towards the reformist and ideology, and some began to allegedly embezzle the bank and funnel money to the party both within and without the order of Hellquill. Failing to address this mismanagement was the final nail in the coffin. There's only def defamation to save face. And here we have it, my friends. We are now at war with the good old Republic of Longsword, who is slowly trying to recover from the Civil War, but let's see how well they actually do. Sir, you're not allowed to move. Um, we're going to actually force you attack so we can get over that river as fast as possible. We chose this towel here because these guys are the absolute weakest that and the entire line, because other divisions do have artillery pieces on them, which does suck. And now we'll do that too. So now we should be able to move around the cabin. By cabin, I mean their their place here, the the country, relatively easily. Good, crush, 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 crush. And then let them do that, and they'll do this too. Nice. And circle and destroy, and then we'll just move in and kill them all off. 
Just like that. And now we'll go to war economy cutting it. Pave the way, and then the brave new frontier. Hell cool continues to lag behind when it comes to industry nowhere it is more obvious than in the countryside. To solve this, we shall entice our wealthy citizens to invest by encouraging the formation of trust through massive deregulation, land sales, and the ability to call upon prisoners sentenced to hard labor to come and work for them. No more obstacles. Very nice. Well, see what you can do. Pay the way. Reinvesting the spoils. If Helco is a stand strong against a pony threat, it needs an industry capable of sustaining modern warfare. Fortunately, since taking power, we've been able to put our claws on a massive amount of land, property, material, and capital. <clears throat> Now we can repurpose these disjointed assets into industrial capacity fit for war. From what these traders stole from our coffers, we shall make rifles and cannons. See what we can do about that. That'd be nice. If not there, that's fine. How about right here? Go, 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 go. Hey, look at that. Nice. Well, if they want to do that, we can do this too. Follow the Veva front? Yeah, they're literally just going to die there. And we're dying here too, but still. Get you to hold right there. There you go, right there. That's better. Rail is gone. Failed revolution. You go right there so they can't do anything about that. Um, can you go there? Zeltstadt? Can you just walk into the capital? Okay. That made it easy. Oh. Thank you very much. And this is our core territory, too. Nice. Not bad. Pretty decent. We can also bring in settlers. Hellcoal remains a rather sparsely populated nation with so much open land, it should be easy to attract new col colonists. We'll gladly purchase many acres of land. Our population means we are able to tax and script more of us before as long as we avoid the dangers of overcrowding. Disband the order. Uh, order the Gemeindienst. In order to keep watchful eye on our citizens and our neighbors, our secret service shall provide us with valuable information. You have to be on the lookout these days after all. Yes, you do. A lot of arty. Fighters would be very nice. More divisions, yes please. Um, I'll go this way to Katzenberg. It's about themselves. Religious social. What the heck is religious socialism? Um, commando. Guess we'll go with Isaac Helprein, I guess. Ah, uh, no critics mean yet. The hair. Probably go superior firepower. Hmm. Let me know which one we should do. In the comments below, should we do General Staff Primacy? Should we do the Vox Grenadiers, which is pretty darn awesome? Or should we do Octung Panzer? I'll let you guys decide which one of these three we should do. I'll let you all decide. There you go. Military as a police. Our police force is not strong enough to keep the ponies and dissidents in line. Wingfried has proposed to militarize them by turning them into paramilitary groups which any fanatic teen can apply for. That will not only show young griffins the strength of the new hell quill, but it will also keep the pressure on domestic enemies. The old dog's new tricks. As been emerged from interrogations of treacherous ponies and hell quill have been received a new and worrying help the dogs of the Bund der Freien Hunde. It was clear since the nomination of Wingfried von Katzenberg as new Grand Master that the members of the Bund had little love for the new direction that the order had undertaken. However, few anticipated such a radical transformation. Our initial intel shows that several members that have used the Boone's resources to help ponies and partisans of flee Hellquill and get to the Riverlands. Interrogated members have denied any active participation in the Boone, but it's clear that they have had at least a task of support from the Boone's board. As such, has been decreed or de decided that the Boone is as a legal organization of Hellquill is to be disbanded immediately and any affiliate be put under investigation or preventative arrest. However, for, however, reports have shown that some of the members have already bolted to the underground and joined forces with the Fishers underground KPH. Traders look in every corner. Oh, wow. Yeah, whatever. No other race, Griffin race. Negligible poverty, not bad. Modest illiteracy is not terrible. Outdated industrial sector, for now. Small science base, well, we're working on it, we're working on it. Mm. 
We'll go for armor for now just because we can. We're using special forces, I know, but whatever. Arena Terra. The point is within our borders not only pose a problem, but an immense threat to the stability and well-being of our nation and its citizens. It's time to start the process of rooting ourselves from them. Helco will always be home to Griffins and Griffins only. Education effort. The Order of Helco has failed in the previous decades to achieve a real literacy and educational policy. They instead relied on traditional apprenticeship, organized by the guilds and local temples' charitable teachings, making the new generations woefully unprepared in an age of industry and increasing complexity. Wars. The civil unrest caused by frontier conflict, creating and partisan activities, has caused illiteracy to worsen in many rural areas. Fortunately, it orders resources and many literate members. They should all be put to the task of finally educating Hellquill and to teach the young chicks of our nation that they're reformist and ideological tenets. It's time for them to learn the name of Wingfried von Katzenbruggen and other duties towards the state. We can resol resolve this issue. Our 45% is not bad. Hey, that's not bad too. Nice. Improve what we have. We need. We definitely need more resources, though. I want to go back to war. I want more war. I just want to conquer and kill everybody. In game. In game. You guys are 18 combat width. You guys, Waffen, Sturmgreifen, are not bad at all. They're not great, but not bad. All right, military police, the Reign of Terror, and the Pass for the Ponies next. We love it. Pneumatic tools, huh? More organization is always nice. 80% stability is pretty nice, too. Wow. Pacify the ponies. For all of our grand plans, we simply cannot shoot every po single pony residing in Hellquill. It would be unfeasible. We don't have enough bullets, and the rats would warn each other. Instead, we'll pursue an active campaign of encouraging the ponies to emigrate. And those who stay will pa be pacified to ensure that they don't cause any sort of trouble. No. Oh. Nice. Hey. Political loyalty. Quick and proper heritage. State serves the military. That's not bad. Uh, oh, interesting. Professional officer corps. Army experience gain. Daily command pack. You know what? We're early enough that I almost never choose this. Can we switch this out later? I want to choose this one for now. So that whatever we get is actually more drastically increased with all the wars we're going to do. So. Multiple organization, reserve officers. Reign of Terror. Last night, 10 minutes after midnight, it commenced. The streets were suddenly lit up with a lot of torches burning bright. Rows and mobs of griffins marched through the streets of the capital, shouting chants along the ways and made their way to the pony ghetto at the outskirts of the city. A group of police officers, uniformed to look just like soldiers, broke open the gate to the ghetto, which had been previously locked to disallow the ponies from leaving the containment zone. It was a slaughter just after three minutes. Houses had been set ablaze, gunshots were being fired, and there were brawls between the angry mob and desperate yet brave ponies. It was no use. At the end of the night, just less than an hour after it all began, the pony ghetto fell silent once more. They were all dead. <clears throat> this night was but the start of something much greater. All across Hellquill, Griffins are encouraged to rise up into violent mobs and attack any ponies in the area. The government has only made their position more clear. Hellquill is home for Griffins, and only Griffins. We'll get rid of the rats eventually. You know what, screw it. We'll go for up a few off later, Mouse. And I've cast the last command power, too, so which is actually really nice. And disband the order. The knightly order of Hellquill is an anachronism. Anachr anachronism of the past centuries, whose role is now superficial in the rapidly changing world, and more importantly, it cannot handle the pony threat adequately instead. Wingfree will reform the state in a more suitable form, and he expects loyal Griffins to take part. Which does kind of suck, but it does give it 25% more crew population factor, so... The Big Stadt Conference. Military training would be nice, but we've got to wait. Military factors would be nice, too. I want a lot of arty. Lots and lots and lots and lots of arty. It's not looking bad so far. I got changed too. Nice. Military Directive 79. <clears throat> Under the authority of the Order of the Brothers of the Griffin House of Prelat Aloysius and Cloudberry Grandmaster Wingfried von Katzenberg has issued the new regulations, effective immediately in the territory of Helquid. Use of magic, flight, and other sort of natural abilities is banned for all creatures other than Griffins except for under express orders from the authorities. Two, pony, all ponies are required to leave the pavement for free for griffins. Let griffins be served first for any services. Properly salute soldiers, nuts, and civil servants. To refrain from any annoyance towards griffins and behave properly. Three, all adult ponies are required to provide labor for public projects or military efforts as required by local authorities. Four, all public meetings of ponies are more, nu more numerous than four band. Five, all ponies must acknowledge that their status as conquered creatures of the griffins. Failure to do so or adhesion to any organization or ideology disputing this fact will result in the harshest penalties. Six, hard labor and internment are hereby instituted as penalties for any severe infraction to the law. Failure to comply to authorities is subversive activity. Activity. Military and civilian courts are habit habilitated to rule and duration. Camps shall be established in all administrative districts under military jurisdictions for such penalties. Let them know their place. Hey, pony minorities. Minus 5%. Ooh, approval population factor. Ooh, get 10% more stability. Oh, yes. 
Longsword Settlement Scandal. After Longsword had been integrated into our nation, a committee was set up to oversee the use or settlement of plundered and seized lands in the country. Most of the land will be settled by settlers and veterans of the money of the sold land will be dedicated to helping them, a demand mostly put forward by Karl von Soldau and Dimitrius Kampfaus. Unfortunately, reports by the committee are stacking up and painting a bleak picture of its work. Several members, mostly Sturm Graf members, have been using the committee to sell or give away lands on the cheap to friends and allies with money being funneled towards the SG's private coffers. It has also been noticed that several industrials and wealthy families, such as the Gutzenfried, have bribed the committee to gain access to several strategic lands. Overall, it seems that the other members of the committee decided against reporting the corruption and embezzlement and rather uh, began a bidding war against the other members. None of these reports have been seen by lower-ranking officers of civilians so far, but there are always rumors, already rumors, of circulating about it. The underground KPH has already begun using it for propaganda. Burn the reports, we'll deal with it quietly. Bold works for some grip and shotgun range. Golden ball, get your dolly now. Purple doll, a purple top was yelling at the top of her lungs to make her family hurry. She heard the gunshots coming from the village. Whatever was going on there, <clears throat> it wasn't good and wouldn't stay put. They had to leave. Her fillies were obeying, but for some reason her father was filling in the kitchen, hunched over the floor. What had gotten into him this time? Father, what are you doing? We need to leave. Finally, Purple Top's father stood up, an old double barrel hunting rifle in his hooves. You go with the little ones. I'm not letting them take my farm. Father! A truck stopped outside. He took her by her shoulders and looked at her. I'll buy you time to go. Purple Top tried to argue, but she couldn't find the words. With tears in her eyes, she obeyed and took her family through the garden door. After they left, the old pony cocked his rifle and walked towards the front door. You don't pitch a pony and expect not to be expect it not to buck. The Yellow Room Meeting. Linkford to gathers military staff and closest advisors in the castle Hellquell's most prestigious room, the Yellow uh, Room. Named after its golden leaf ceiling. You have a choice to improve any suspicions. Uh, uh, auspicious. Uh, Demetrius Campus was rounding up his review of the military, and the old veteran distinguished himself by this defeatism. In conclusion, we'll be taking into account of the state of military forces and equipment, our military industrial production, and conscriptable population, and compared to our enemies, we're incapable of carrying out a successful military campaign eastwards. By my estimates, even a successful offensive would be a decisively stopped to Buckhorn at least. Or Buckthorn. The accus accusations immediately flared. Eisen Silberkrone and Alina Hockmeister immediately labeled Kampfaus a traitor for implying defeat and a pony lover. Karl von Soda took Kampfaus' defense with less than flattering language, which in turn angered Willem Stackelberg, who complained of such disorderly conduct. Vinkfried didn't intervene. Competition was never a bad thing, and he let them sort this out until he could identify a convincing winner. Kampfaus eventually knocked on the table, stating that I simply cannot, cannot revolutionize mathematics to take the River Coalition's population and guns to be lower than ours. You simply lack imagination. All eyes turned to Adler von Bingenberg, who leaned towards the table. The ponies can't do much, but they, can, they can't fight the fact that they are creatures of flesh and bone that are different than ours. And in the past, their lands have been hit by a disease so deadly that pony kind nearly went extinct in Griffonia while our spared as well as kind as, as well as nature commanded it. The Purple Plague, they called it. Karl von Soda laughed and angrily snapped at Adler. So you, this is your great plan? We'll just wait for them to sneeze hard enough that they all die? Adler glared at him before answering. Who said anything about waiting? Silence fell in the room. Vingfried finally leaned on his table. Elaborate, my dear Adler. Ooh, a great plan has been set in motion. Gas, maybe, maybe, maybe not. The Stackelberg affair. It was a calm morning when Wilhelm Stackelberg walked in the oldest castle in Helquil. It was nothing out of the ordinary except for Stackelberg wearing his full traditional knight regalia and followed by six knights equally dressed. He didn't speak to anyone and simply walked into the hall. The group slowly raised a stir. Some knights, visibly aware of their visit, were walking out of the quarters similarly dressed. Others tried to interfere, only to be stopped by the knights. With each step of the solemn procession, the castle slowly descended into chaos with knights and reformists and officers fighting. Sturmgraf members began to open fire in some halls, causing rapid response from the knights. Despite the chaos, the procession carried on with Stackelberg leading it. His face was unfettered and solemn, like a statue of Boreas. He walked as if he was imbued with the divine mission. When the procession arrived in front of Vinkfried's office, they were welcomed by machine gun wielding guards who raised their weapons. Three Wilhelm's followers went ahead to attack them, but he stopped them with a gesture of his arm. The guards kept their cool and simply pointed their guns at the crowd as if they were unsure whether to fire or not. Stackelberg walked towards them, his sword and claw, but not menacingly. Guards, he said calmly, You have sworn an oath to the gods to serve the order to carry on the mission given to us by our late Emperor Grover II. We're sworn to fight the Pony Venice, to stay loyal forevermore, and to bring justice against any who would prevent us to do so, but behind those doors is such a griff, you know it. I can see it in your eyes, so I ask you this, loyal knights of Hellquill, stand aside and let me do my duty. The guards stand down. Oh, whoops. The guards stand open fire. The Golden Flugel Beer Hall attack. Today, the Golden Flugel Beer Hall, an establishment patronized by both knights and members of the Sturmgreif and Reformista movement, has been at the target of a terrorist attack. A bomb had been installed in the recently repaired lighting system and seemed to have been time for a birthday celebration for a prominent member of the Reformista party. Early leads seem to indicate that the KPH and part Pony Partisans are behind the attack. While there's been several dead and injured officers, all senior officers have been left unharmed. The stroke of luck can be attributed to a strategic meeting going for longer than expected due to the several disagreements and arguments between officers. Truly, luck is on our side. The end of chapter. The guards were not moved by Wilhelm's speed and gunned him down. Stockelberg was struck in the head and immediately fell. His followers tried to rush the guard were similarly gunned down. <clears throat> 
Uh, the rest fled. The guards went in and called it out. Uh, you may come out, Grandmaster. The danger's gone. Then angry Wingfried emerged from his closet only to grab the phone, calling for a reinforcement from the Sturm Greif. He thought for a moment and called von Schodau, who led the local garrison. Von Schodau, there's been an attempt on my life. I ordered you to lock down the city. Arrest all knights wearing anything resembling a parade or traditional uniform without party signs for now. Put armored cars in the streets. I want Helco to be bloody silent until tomorrow evening. Von Soldau acquiesced, and Wingfried hung up. He thought for a moment uh, as more soldiers were rallying around his office. He asked for a report. The school was still happening as few Griffiths had learned of Stackelberg's demise yet. The situation could still spiral out of control even with the leader dead. Wingfried grabbed the intercom to broadcast a message in the palace. The newly installed device didn't work at first and cracked at first. Wingfried grappled with it until Knight came to help him with it, but he swapped him aside, finally getting it to work. Now it's a Falco. This is Grandmaster Wingfried von the Katharinburg. Speaking, Knight Wilhelm Stockelberg has died in the dot like the dog he was trying to assassinate me. Stand down and surrender to my little Griffiths if you don't, I promise you the most gruesome death you can imagine. He kept the intercom and rested on his chair. He looked at the guards and yelled at them to secure the perimeter, which they did. He proceeded to pour himself another drink to calm his nerves while waiting. The battle went on for another hour until Calm finally settled in his castle. Many had died, but they had prevailed. Adler von Wingenberg had also been the target of an assassination attempt, but fortunately survived as he was in the private bathroom when Stockelberg's followers were fighting with his personal guards outside his office. Wingfried sighed when he heard the news, but at least Stockelberg had made it easy for them to finally disband the order. The end of this order was long overdue. That's a claw. Oh boy. Prerogative state. The Führer of Prinzip. Might makes right. The Führer speaks. As I was walking towards Hello Quill's castle balcony, Wingfried von Katzenberg was pondering on everything that he'd achieved. It had been a long and difficult journey after all. Many had tried to trick him, rob Hello Quill of its glorious future. Others had even tried to kill him now, but he had prevailed. The time had come for him to achieve his destiny. He arrived at his balcony and was welcomed by his staff, Adler von Wingenberg, and Demetrius Kampfau saluted him. He had chosen them both, the two most loyal servants, to stand by his side during his speech. He stopped to smile and embrace Edler, who had helped him to find the right words. The griff, known to dislike touch, seemed to be taken aback, but Wingfried didn't care. It was, it was his moment. He stepped outside and looked upon the crowds outside. He approached the microphones that would transmit a speech to the nation, took a deep breath. My people, Griffins of Hellquill, how long have we been left, all left, to rot in this frontier since the day that Grover II sent us on this mission that had been ours for so long? How neglected have we been? Cast aside like a scum of Griffonia, paid him paltry honors and left to struggle for our lives against the wretched dogs and ponies of the East, haven't we suffered enough years ago? I ask myself these questions. As to answer them that I have sought to take the reins of this nation, I have seen what our good people were capable of, the greatness lying untapped in our hearts of Griff Frontier Griffs. And it's armed with such national spirit that I've taken the task of giving you all back your potential, your pride, your power. Some have sought to stop me, to keep you all in the chains of bondage of the West to be, be beaten uh, by the East. Scum like Wilhelm Stockelberg. He paused to let the people hear the boos of his supporters. Then he went on with a fury in his voice. But now we've become a true realm, a new kingdom carved by our own might. On this day we stand united as one. On this day we, those driven to keep us from what is ours will witness our might. On this day we shall act as one and we shall be ignored no more. Defenders of the nation of Helquil, now is our time. Wingfried to shivering paused to see soldiers and civilians cheer and applaud him. The nation shall last a thousand years. Must dedicate all resources to extermination of pony kind. Abwarten Elera Doctrine. That is sharp claws. The Era Gürtel. Ooh. The Big Shot Conference. So the dissolution of the height. Order of Hellquill, the question has arisen regarding what path the new, stronger Hellquill shall take. Fingfried has decided to discuss the matter in Bigstadt, calling not only the generals of the Wehrmacht, but also Edler von Wingenberg, as well as several of his cronies. The division had not stopped uh, merely at the organization level either. Instead, the Sturmgraf and Wehrmacht have argued for two different ways to approach their future challenges. The Wehrmacht, especially General Kampaus, has argued that whatever the long term goals may be, the plans must be laid realistically. For example, ill conceived fancies, such as this crusade against ponies, must be reevaluated. The goal isn't some insane extermination, it's building the glory of Hellquill, opening up new lands for settlers and ensuring a stable and organized society. While well, Wingfried slowly nodded along with Kampaus's words, Adler von Wingenberg has scoffed at these notions, meeting the calm, dry deliberations with fire and brimstone, and dismissing the Wehrmacht's plan as pony like mewling. The ponies infesting these lands are a cancer, he says, shown not to the least by the violence and so that they must be exterminated so that in the ashes something greater can be built. The strength Hellquill has gained by discarding the old is undeniable and should continue down this glorious path, making Hellquill into a great new realm unlike any seen before, where strength and glory truly is supreme. The future is awaiting those willing to grasp it in the claws, and Hellquill is poised to seize it. Kampaus's contempt filled Schneer did not go unnoticed, but neither did Wingfried's obvious fascination with Edler's words. While the discussions continued, it seemed that the, the leader had made his choice. More moderate approach? Well, Adler's right. The pony mess must be exterminated. You know what? I'm going to leave this to you. Should we do the Abbatten and Lara Doctrine, or should we commit genocide against ponies? I'm personally feeling at the time of me recording this towards genocide, but let me know what you think in the comments below. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll decide the fate of what the Oldenstadt of Hellquell 
will be. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.